Good evening. And Welcome to Mum, McLuhan on Maui. Today's seminar number 15. It is uh, June the 6th. Kia ora all. And let's get going. I mean, it's ridiculous that this, I watched the guy who wrote this book, Too Big to Fail, being interviewed. He had no idea why any of it happened. And he had a couple of stupid ideas that, oh, some greedy individuals, they, they take the uh, chemical body, anthropomorphic, some, some evil guy did it. They don't even acknowledge the effects of the chip body. And the only reason that the economy recovers is you can't get rid of the chip body. So typing continues. Please, Mr. Bernanke, bring that kind of statement into your discussions at Congress. It's very simple. You know, I met this is guy like 10 years ago. He was, he was putting together this accounting software package that had so many little tiny detailed categories built into this thing that it was impossible for anybody to really analyze whether or not he was keeping good records or not. <laughs> so he couldn't be accused of anything. That, and that's kind of a, a, a little miniature model of what happened with the chip body and comics of banking and so on. There were so many little tentacles of the backdoor agreements being made on so many levels that nobody could regulate it anymore. Yeah, that's the point. You can't visualize. To organize and put in accounting books, you can't visualize the digital economy. And that's all it is. Very simple. But nobody, uh, for cultural reasons, they can't fit their identity within that, so they don't think that's relevant. Because in an information society, it's like endless research and development. You can't, a, a university professor is not going to figure out what his course is about. He has to keep doing the course. Therefore, he has to raise new questions. So when McLuhan said, we don't have the answers, we have the questions, just saying that is not a metaphysical endpoint. He's saying, we got the questions, which you guys will want to keep your classes going. The economy needs more and more, more questions. questions. Yeah, questions that can't be resolved. It's yeah, yeah. It to perpetual uh, discussion. discussion. Perpetual learning. Working, yeah. Now we're getting into good stuff. Fuck the uh, whatever we talked about. Now, this is the issue, Mr. Foo Fighter and Mr. Edmonds, whoever else is here. This is the post McLuhan topic. And bring in Scott Taylor, you get in virtual space about the fact you can't visualize. You can't Gutenberg eyes. No more Gutenberg. No more gluten. And see, that explains why it can't crash. And John Baudrillard is pretty good at explaining that without using McLuhan's reference point. Baudrillard says that the virtual economy saved the physical economy because it could crash out there and never affect the old physical economy. So you're never going to get an economic crash. You're going to get spasms, the name of one of Croker's books. And McLuhan said because we could act out scenarios on, in movies and Hollywood stuff in the 60s, the, uh, the plan that Dave Worcester said was going to happen, have nuclear war by 69. The Pentagon guys couldn't do it because the population was thankfully too distracted in watching information scenarios like Dr. Strangelove and experiencing the thing before it actually happens, so therefore yeah. you'll... That's a passive activity, though. I think what... I think no, no, it's not passive. That's where you miss the, act, the active cognition that goes on in the viewer of television. Active movies and information overload of the 60s solve the problem where Big Brother could not organize the, uh, the population into hatred of some enemy and have a nuclear war over it. That whole scenario in Big Brother could not happen. And the, the obvious example, they did not see that if you showed Vietnam on television inside an American home, that brought violence too much right directly as a live thing into their life. And so immediately there was no oomph, no patriotic spirit to support the Vietnam War, which was probably uh, set up to have a nuclear war, be a trigger point.